Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. Um, it is recording. Yeah, stop recording. So real quick, I'll go over that for everybody that isn't on. So this is the meeting for everybody that's watching this recording. This button is how you would mute your phone. I'm sorry, mute your microphone in a meeting. This button is a sharing button, which you would not normally do. Actually, I don't even know if you see that. Do you guys see this, Roscoe, a little square? It would have an arrow in it probably for you, though. Yeah, but mine's gray. It's OK, gray. you can't do that. That's what I was wondering. Um, this button right here is how you communicate when you are in a, a meeting like this, a live session. So if I tell you all to mute your microphones because it's there's not enough bandwidth and it's getting we're having technical issues or there's just too many people and it's getting too um, chaotic. If you click on this button, it'll actually open up a little window and then you can just type in notes over here to communicate. Oh, stop it. Why is that not moving? Hmm. That works. Yeah. So this is where I've typed in a couple of notes over here. It's actually the same feed for the live session itself. So if you'll notice, like see this note right here, 902, you can try to call tech help real quick. These are the same notes. I'm going over to my Teams button and I'm going into the, I'm actually in the live session, Mr. Gill. So you see this right here, live session, Mr. Gill. So this is the meeting that you joined. Um, and oh, here we go. The notes are covered up. And here are the meeting or the notes that you just saw on that other screen. And there's my last one says you can try to call tech help right there. So you can still communicate me with me even if you're not in the meeting like Jaden was having trouble getting in the meeting. So he just typed a response in here and it shows up in the meeting that we're in so that I know if somebody's trying to get in. So if you ever have problems getting in, you can just type the notes in. No, it's got to be. Yes. Are we ever going to end up going back to campus or is it like done? No idea. Um, they said May 1st was their hopeful return date. I'll be honest, I don't think we're going back. Um, it's it's not impossible to go back, but given that we are still getting more and more cases every day of Corona and, and a lot more, like the number of cases every day goes up. So like if yesterday there was 100, then today there's probably 105. So until that peaks and we actually start having less cases every day than the day before, there's no way that we would return. And even when it starts going down, I still doubt we'll return. So it all depends on when that happens, but I don't see that happening certainly until middle of May. Just okay. my opinion. Um, so anyway, remember if you go to the live session post because you're having trouble, you can type a note in there and it'll still work. Yeah, I agree, Tristan. It won't be me. Um, so let's go. Do, do you, first of all, do you guys? So I've got four people on Tristan, Yamil, Roscoe, and Justice. So you guys have any? Oh, again, you can unmute your microphones. I, know I mentioned that, but there it is. Now I got to figure out how to get into the back into the live session. For some reason, it, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So, Justice, if you want to unmute your mic, unless if you have background noise and leave it muted, but if you have questions, just unmute it real quick and tell me your question. Or again, you can click on this little button right here and that'll allow you to type in your questions. Actually, I better pull that up. That'll allow, allow you to type in your questions over here. So Roscoe, I'll just go in order of the way I see people on my screen. Roscoe, do you have any specific questions? Mm, no, not really. Well, I'm right. kind of good. Yesterday I did about six hours of homework for math. So did and you didn't you like got it all done? You're good on it, or you have yeah, all of the uh I got everything done with the Pearson online except for the one that's due on the 17th. I did one of them that's due on the 17th, the other one I didn't do. I'm going to go through the ones due on the 17th because, frankly, those are the only ones you guys need to be worrying about right now anyway. All the other stuff is past due, and I'm, I'm not going to reopen it. I'll just 
what I did is I assigned it again for one of those. So anybody that didn't turn in the one from last Friday, one of the ones due this week is the same exact assignment that was due last Friday. I'm just going to count the higher of the two grades. And I'll probably do that every once in a while where I'll give you the assignment again and I'll count the higher of the two grades. So if I've already graded it, you should kind of know what's wrong with it and you should be able to go back in and, and hopefully get a better grade the second time. Uh, Kentrez, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone if you want. We only have like five people on, I believe. I can tell you real quick. Uh, one, two, three. Actually, we only have four. I guess we lost Justice. She must have fallen off. So, uh, Tristan, do you have any specific questions about the assignment? Not at this moment. Okay. Have you worked on the assignment yet? The yeah, I started this? yesterday. Okay. Contrez. Again, you're going to have to unmute your microphone to answer, or you can type it in in the screen over here. You need to click this little button right here, and that'll allow you to type notes. So, Contrez, do you have any questions? Looks like Barry just joined, I think, maybe. Oh, wait, no, that's Justice. I'm sorry. She's maybe back in. All right. Now, all you guys, I'm getting, like you're saying, you don't know how to do stuff when I get messages on focus, and here you are, and you don't have any questions. So don't say later that you weren't able to do it because you're on here and you're not asking questions about it. Uh, Yamil, do you have any specific questions? No. And Justice, are you on? Can't tell. In a call, I don't know what that means. Justice, if you if you can hear me, but you have background noise or something. This button right here, see where it says conversation, that will allow you to type questions over here or comments if I ask you something or whatever. You see a few notes. All right, so if nobody has specific questions, I'm just going to go into the Pearson online book. Um, first of all, you should all know this, but I'll show you how to get to it. This is the book right here. If you haven't seen it before, it says Pearson Easy Bridge. I just call it Pearson Online Book. Once you click on that, you'll get to a screen. I don't know exactly what it looks like for you guys, but basically you're looking for this, Envision Florida Algebra. Actually, what do you guys see when you first click on it? Maybe somebody can just explain it. Do you see a screen like this? No, I see a screen that's like the three little boxes that's like assignments, classes, and stuff like that. And you click on assignments, so that's what it brings me to that. And like this. Yeah. All right. So if it takes you straight to this, it does it say on there that you have an assignment due or something? Like, do you see that right on this screen? I don't tell me whenever I have an assignment. What's that? It like, tells me whenever I have an assignment. It does tell you, right? Like you, you don't have to search around to find it. Like it's, no, it's exactly it me, yeah. Okay. I thought it did, but I wasn't sure. Cause for me, I actually wind up going into the book itself and you guys can do this too. It's that one that says envision Florida algebra. This is a good resource. Like it takes a little bit of playing around with it, but not much. Cause frankly, all you have to do, I mean, you see here, it says systems of linear equations, right? And then it says also and inequalities. If I go in there, here's the lesson on how to do it by graphing. Here's the lesson on how to do it by substitution. Here's one on how to do it by elimination, which we'll get to next. Probably not for a week or two, though. But let's say you don't remember where all that stuff is. All you got to do is go up to this little search button. So just click on. You can just type in a quicker version and just say system of equations, which is what I would normally do. And then from there, I would search through that stuff and find it. But you could probably type in graphing, and that would probably pop up first if you did that. So, so the lesson is what you want. You don't want to worry about all this other junk. That's stuff that I'll wind up assigning. And in all honesty, you probably don't see that stuff anyway because you don't have the same permissions I have. So here's the lesson right there, system <laughs> equations by graphing. Mm -hmm. I just stole my dad's Reese egg. <laughs> okay. So if you have issues with doing something, the book is a good resource. Also, when you're doing the questions, um, 
Okay, well, I'm just going to go to back to where I was. Oh, actually, I can go. This might have it right here. Mr. Gill, Justice said she left because she couldn't see your screen. She just saying, saw the same black screen. Hmm. Like, I can see your screen, but she said she couldn't. I can see it, right? Anyone, everybody else falling asleep. So here's the stuff that I've been assigning. These are actually much longer than what I assign. Yeah, let's see if it tells us down here. Yeah, if you notice, this has 22 questions. What I've been assigning has only had um, like three questions, four questions, I think. So when you come into the assignments that I give you, they're typically only going to be four-ish questions, maybe three, maybe four, maybe five, but around four. If you don't know what to do, just go to the question help in the upper right hand first. That way you don't have to worry about going out. I mean, it'll take you straight to videos. So it'll right here. You can just do I want to read the textbook? Do I want to go to a video so I could hit video and then it'll take me straight to a video that will help. So that's the fastest way to do it. I have YouTube videos which are specific to doing the Pearson lessons, so I'll show you those. So if I come out now, the titles aren't always going to match up. It's it's just it'd be impossible because frankly, the some of the videos are old and the, the title is not going to be able to match up exactly with the Pearson stuff. I tried to match focus and Pearson up, so those should be pretty in sync right now so that I can say assignment one in focus is going to be the same as assignment one in Pearson. Um, or assignment really in Pearson we didn't start until like assignment five but so I'll go over the ones that you see so here is one system of equations and using the online book graphing so that was the first one we did I think when, when I assigned you how to do a, a system of equations problem and you had to create a graph we really didn't do that one nobody did that assignment so I wound up throwing it out this is if you don't have printing. So it says how to create your own graph or coordinate plane. That was if somebody didn't have printing, the assignment I gave where you were supposed to print out the worksheet and do the graphing. If you didn't have a printer to print it out, this explains how to do it. So if you haven't done that assignment, I might open it back up. Right now it's probably past due and I don't even know if it'll allow you to upload it and focus. Um, this is from the live session recording, so I put that up here from last week. Looks like I didn't put the one from the ninth up, so I need to put that up. Those are also available in Teams, so if you ever want to go back and watch live recordings, like you, you know, I'm sure all of you guys are up bright and early, but let's say for some reason you're not, you can go back to, oh, let me do that. You can go back to Teams, click on the Teams button, the live session, so we're in the live sessions. So if you'll notice, they get posted right after. Yeah, here's the recording right here. Some people were saying that didn't work for them through here. That's why I posted it. That one worked for me. So there's one. Here's the live recording. If you'll notice, there's no picture there. So you can try to cut and paste this link or just click on the link. Or this one's already up in YouTube, so you can watch it through YouTube. I will. Also put the one from today up on YouTube as well as in this um, feed right here. It should appear as soon as we're done recording. And I think that's everything there. So, so you can get through this. I do put a lot of notes in your actual teams when I give an assignment. I'll also put a lot of notes in the team. So make sure you're reading these. I get a lot of the same questions over and over and over. Like here's one about assignments, old and new. So. I just told you what you had to do for the week in that. So read that. Um, that one I repeated it somehow. I don't know how that happened. So this was information if you need to get your laptop fixed. If you're having technical issues, this is information right here on where to go to get a new laptop. This is the tech help phone number. So if you just are having issues right at the time, you can call them. Sometimes you have to leave a message and they call back. This tells you when the next live sessions are. So you need to be reading through these posts if you're not. 
there is a bunch of information on the assignments. So here it talks about the Pearson assignment right here. I think there's probably a lot of times links in the, yeah, well, here's the name of the video. I wrote the name of the video because the link wasn't working. So you can just cut and paste that into YouTube and search for it. And it pops right up if you search for the name of the video. Yes. I woke up yesterday because it said 412 next live session or whatever. So I woke up at like 830 yesterday. I think we had a live session. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I was wondering if that was going to be. So the way that I'm starting to do it, and I didn't do this on everything, but when it's when it's truly a message that's date specific, I date it with the day that I'm making it first. So the, the first number you see, the first date you will see will always be the day that I created it. And then I'll maybe include other dates, like for the live sessions, like wherever it was. Yeah, there we go. And then so next live sessions would be that. This way it, it keeps it in order for me and hopefully for you to try to find information. So like if I put an assignment, although the, the only problem is the assignments are automatically loaded. So I can't really change, like see how this looks. I didn't do that that automatically gets put into the system like that. So it does like it does show that it's the attendance lesson from yesterday. Should actually did it show the 414 lesson? Oh, is this it? Oh no, see again, this is one that just automatically was put in when I created the assignment. It automatically created that post. Um, so again, same thing, it automatically created that. So some of them are going to look different this this the way you can tell though is this is one that the system created this is one that i created when it has that blue bar not that that really means a whole lot to anybody but um if you're ever curious you know why didn't i do something well if it looks like this i didn't do it the system created it based on something else that i did so let's look at uh grades real quick i don't want to share everybody's grades but yeah i don't want to share that I have like a 10% in your class, so. Well, most of the grades are low, so I'll tell you right now, we're going to wind up um, replacing a lot of the old grades somehow. So if you did them, then you'll be in good shape because you'll get a lot of bonus, bonus credits when we do the replacements if you already had a grade in there. But if you didn't, then you'll be able to make it up. Um, yeah, I just tech or send a message to somebody that was talking about giving up and I'm like, don't give up. We're going to replace a lot of the, just because people were having issues, technical issues. But so the last four weeks of this quarter are going to count for most of the points in the class. It's because everybody should be up and running now. You've had plenty of time to get technology straightened out. So we got our process down. I think that's going to work. We're just going to use all our grades are going to be in this Pearson online book moving forward. We're just going to use one resource. I'm not going to try to have you do a bunch of different things because that just got too confusing. Um, so you see here, these are the next three assignments you have. They're all in the Pearson book and these are all due this week. So let's go into the Pearson book and look at those. Uh, I mean, I just showed you a little bit about how to get help in it, but real quick. Um, actually, let's go to this because then I can write on the screen. So when you have a graphing assignment, which you do have a graphing assignment. Um, let's see if I can, I don't know if I can open two of these at one time. We'll call this the So that's using sub. Actually, here we'll do this one first since I have this one up. All right. So for substitution, uh, I'm going to kind of give you some of the answers to some of your assignments. So pay attention. When we talk about substitution versus graphing, like a system of equations, first of all, just means you have more than one equation, more than one variable. And if we have two equations and two variables, then we're going to be able to solve that. If we have three equations and three variables, we could solve that. So most of what we're actually, all of what we're going to deal with is just going to be two equations, two variables, X and Y, 
and then two equations. That means whatever the solution is, it's going to work for both of these equations. When we find a coordinate, so a coordinate just means an x and a y value. So, so let's just take a guess, just wildly, randomly, I'm going to guess, and I'm going to say, well, I know if I plugged in 1 for y, I'm sorry, 1 for x, that would give me 3 for y. So I'm going to say that 1 comma 3, I think, is my solution to both of these systems. Well, that means 1 comma 3 should work in both of these. The left should be equal to the right. Well, I just did the math on the first one, the one in blue. So this one, if y is 3, I'm getting it from right there. That's my y value. That's my x value. And x is 1, then I can plug those in. And if you'll see, I get 3 equals 3. So yeah, that worked. That means it's a true statement. 1 comma 3 works for the blue equation, the top equation. But the problem is it's got to work for both equations. So if I try it in the second equation and I say, okay, well, let me plug in 1 for x. And then let me plug in 3 for y. Oops. So 1 for x plus 4 and then 3 for y. That just means multiply when I put parentheses like that. Equals 12. Well, I get 3 plus 12 equals 12, so I get 15 equals 12. Well, that's not a true statement. It didn't work for that second equation. So 1 comma 3 cannot be the solution to this system of equations because it didn't work for both equations. So that's all a solution to a system of equations means. It means that it, it works for both equations. So with that in mind, if we look at each line individually, first of all, we wouldn't really graph this one probably, because if you'll notice this red equation right here, it's not set up with y all by itself. And that's the way we like to graph is when y is all by itself. We can graph this second one also, the one in red. It's just not as easy. So this is really one where you would probably rather do it with substitution because the y's are not all by themselves. They're not isolated. But let's say we went ahead and graphed the two lines because, you know, I'm a math teacher and I know how to do it, even with a second equation. Well, that's what we would get on the right, the graph you're looking at. I wrote, I did the blue line to match the blue equation, the red line to match the red equation. So for on the blue line, every point on that blue line so if we took the x and y value, again, we just did 1 and 3, right? So this point right here on the blue line is 1 comma 3, right? You can see that I'm at an x of 1 and a y of 3. So that point right there, that point right there. I'm going to get rid of it so you can see it better, but I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. So that point right there is 1 comma 3, and it works for the the top equation. We just tested it out. Any point on that blue line. So if I chose this one right here, that one's negative one comma negative one. That would also work for that top equation. Any point on that line works for that blue equation. Well, the opposite is true for the red line. Any point on the red line works for the red equation. So really quickly, we could test one of those out. So this point on the red line is zero comma three right? Because my x value is 0, my y value is 3. x value is 0, y value is 3, so that point right there is 0, comma 3. Well, let's test it out. If I plug in 0 here times 3, that just goes away because 3 times 0 is 0, and then plus 4 times 3. Yep, sure enough, I get 12 equals 12. So that point on the red line works. Any point on the red line, if I plug it into that red formula, is going to work. That's kind of the definition of a line. It's Remember, it's a, it's a series of points, that, that an infinite number of points, that follow a pattern. And that pattern is based on the equation itself. So with that in mind, if all the, solu or if all the points on the blue line are solutions to the blue equation, and if all the points on the red line are solutions to the red equation, that means that point right there where they cross has to be a solution to both equations. So that's why when we say when the two lines cross, there's one answer. 
Well, that's because that one point where they cross works for both equations by definition. The problem with it is, I'm going to zoom in. If you'll notice, we can't really tell what that point is. Like, it's not right on one of the integers on the x-axis or one of the integers on the y-axis. I could estimate and I could say, well, that's about, if I, if I go from the place that they cross straight down to the x-axis, it looks like that's maybe about 0.8, maybe. Like, it's not quite all over to 1, somewhere right there on the x-axis, I'm guessing. So it's about 0.8. And then the y value, if I go up, is about right there, which is probably about halfway, so about 2.5. Well, that doesn't really help me a whole lot because I'm just guessing. I don't know for sure if it's 0 0.8 and, and 2.5. I mean, it might be 0.81 and 2.4. I can't tell. So if unless <laughs> the, yeah. I'm going to say I'm really wrong for this, this, but I zoomed, I zoomed in, in on one of the things, things that kind of run questions. questions. Like, I zoomed in all the way to go see if I can, like, get it on there. And I don't know how to zoom out. On Pearson you're talking about? Yeah. All right, I'll go back over there in a second. Let me finish this one. All right. Um, so, anyway, here's an answer to one of the questions in Pearson. You would use graphing when all of the answers are nice and round integers, like they land right on a corner. Like if the if the two lines would have crossed right there, well, that's three and negative three, like I can tell that. But if they cross like they did in our example in between, I can't really tell what that is. So you can, use, and you can always use substitution. Substitution will always work um, because it'll give you an exact answer. But graphing really is only good when the um, answers are nice round integers. Like if they cross on the, basically they have to cross at the corners of squares, which these two lines didn't. So that's kind of an answer. You'll still have to read the question and figure out exactly which one's right. But um, all right, so let, let me show you real quick while we're at a little bit of a breaking point. I'll show you the. Pearson. So you said when you zoomed in, and I'll be honest, is this how you zoomed in? Like, I kept clicking it. Yeah, like that. No, not like that. I just kept on clicking the screen. That like on the graph things. Oh, on the graph. Like you had a um. I don't. Let me see if I can get the one that's like that. This is not the same assignment that you had. Like this? I mean, it's still the same. Well, actually, that doesn't even... Like over here, there's a zoom in button and then a zoom out button. Yeah, they all had... So they didn't have the little magnifying glasses? Like these things? No, they weren't there. Which, uh, tell you what, let's go back and finish, and then if we have some time, I'll let you just tell me which assignment. We'll go look at that question. All right. All right, so next page. There we go. Um, so with substitution, so this is your last assignment that you're, you're going to work on. With substitution, all you're doing, and there's a video, so I'm not going to go through all of these. This is already recorded on YouTube. So it's called solving a system of equations by substitution. The, the only trick to it is if I'm looking at this. So again, I'm going to have one answer for these two equations that, that makes both equations true. It's going to be an X and a Y. And that one combination of X and Y's will work in both equations. Well, I can't solve an equation. So I'm looking at the bottom of the equation down here. I can't solve an equation that has two variables. So what I could do is I could take my information from this top equation and I could say, well, you know what? I know that Y is actually equal to 6X plus 7. So if I wanted this bottom equation to only have one variable, I could get rid of the Y and I could replace that with this 6X plus 7. 
because it's the same thing. It's like saying, what's the value of a dollar versus four quarters? I could replace either of them. If I go into a store, I can pay with a dollar, I can pay with four quarters. So I can replace either value. It's the same thing here. I'm replacing whatever Y is with 6X plus 7 because it's the same thing. So I'm going to rewrite the equation. 3X doesn't change. Subtract 8. The numbers will never change, so 8 doesn't change. Now, instead of Y, though, I'm going to write 6X plus 7 because that's the same value as Y. It's like I just put four quarters there instead of having a dollar bill there. And then now that equals 4. Now I just solve it out. So you got to go back to what we did with the distributive property. So 3X is the same. I have negative 8 times 6X. So you got to make sure you get your negative stuff right, which is 48. Subtract 48X. Negative 8 times positive 7 is subtract 56. And then 4 didn't change. So now I can combine these two like terms. So I get um, negative 45x subtract 56 equals 4. And then I get, uh, so I need to add this. Again, all of this is recorded, so if you're not following along, you can go to YouTube and see it all over again and pause it. So I get 64 plus 56 is 60. And then I get negative 45x over here because these two canceled out. And then my last step is to divide by negative 45. Make sure you include the negative there. Um, it's like that. And then if I do that, I get X equals, it would be 1.333333 if you did it on a calculator, or it's negative four thirds. Now I'm not done when I do that. That is only what X equals. I still need to know what Y equals. So I would have to come back up here and choose, I'm going to choose the original equation because it says right there that I'm solving for Y if I use this. So Y would then equal... 6 times negative 4 thirds, because that's what X is now. I just calculated that out, and then plus 7. So again, I'm replacing this X right here with what I solved and came up with for X down here. Same concept. Instead of having X in there, I'm going to, or instead of having a dollar, I'm going to put four quarters in. Same concept. They're, they have the same value. So X has the same value as negative four thirds. So I would put it in there. If I do the math on this, I'm just going to tell you real quick what the answer is. Six times negative four thirds is negative eight plus seven. So Y is negative one. So my final answer, and this is a, a place where a lot of you are getting confused on what to write as your final answer. Your final answer is in the form of a, a coordinate negative four thirds comma negative one that's your final answer so all of that math is just to get you to that point so i'm not going to do the rest of them i will say there are some tricky situations you need to be aware of that's what this slide is all about so make sure you watch the video it goes over um it goes over unique situations when you have so these for these situations here mean i have one solution because I solved it out and I just got one X and one Y. X was negative four thirds, Y was negative one. Well, these situations come out to be unique. Uh, I think this one comes out to be no solution and you'll see what that looks like when you solve it out. Actually, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. This one's infinite solutions, I think. Watch the video. I think that one comes out to be infinite solution and that one comes out to be no solutions. Graphically, that means if you looked at them, infinite solutions would mean when you graph the two lines, they would be right on top of each other. So the lines would be exactly on top of each other because if they're touching at every single point, that means there's an infinite number of solutions. Wherever the two lines touch are the solutions. No solution means the lines never touch. So if you had graphed those, they would look like this. They would be right next to each other, but they would never touch. They would just go on forever.
That's the real big version of YouTube videos again. Uh, well, there they are right there. So solve a system of equations with substitution. That's the one that I just showed you. It's the rest of that video. Uh, system of equations graphing. This one is specific to the Pearson assignment. So you may want to look at that one, Roscoe. That one I did specific to that one assignment that you're talking about. Actually, here, why don't... Uh, no, there, it doesn't show the Pearson book problems. In. All right, let me see if we can get into it. So this is the original one that was due last Friday, so it's probably not the one you're working on, although I think it's the same exact problems, in all honesty. I don't think I changed anything for one of the assignments. Um... Oh, you know what? Since it's past due. Oh, no, I can still get into it. All right, so you get a question like this. There's no graph on that one. Oh, are you talking about these? No, I was talking about one from like a week, like a week or two ago. And this is the very first Pearson assignment right here. I don't think it was on Pearson. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to do the other one. If, if you're talking about the one uh, a long time ago. Yeah, I did from a long time ago. It wasn't that one. Uh, I did that one yesterday. I'm surprised you were even still able to work on that. I thought I deleted that. <clears throat> it uh, was the one where you had to use the little tool to try to graph, yeah. to create lines. Yeah. <clears throat> nobody was getting that one and nobody was doing it. Yeah, because it was a pain in the butt. Well, and I did a video on that one too to show you how to do it. Um, yeah, I watched it was like a 37 minute video or whatever. Yeah, it might have been this one right here, possibly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, you don't have to. This is you don't have to. I've made it a lot easier. All the assignments are going to be multiple. So we're just going to use Pearson. We're just going to use multiple choice questions. Um, I'll have videos that go over them, typically done by me. But yeah, we're don't don't worry about that assignment. It, I don't even think that assignment is in focus for a grade anymore. I took it out of focus. I'm almost positive about that. I guess it's still in Pearson. But. So So if you'll notice the top equation, the slope, well, let's start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept is positive too, right? So you need to look down here and you need to say, okay, which of these lines has a y-intercept of positive two? Well, this one does, right? Positive two right there. Well, this one does. Actually, both of these have positive two. So that can't be right, correct? Because one of the y-intercepts is negative two, one of them is positive two. So they can't both have a positive two y-intercept. So I can tell you right now, graph B is wrong because one of them should be going through negative two, one of them should be going through positive two. Well, I can also tell you graph D is wrong because they both go through negative two. One line should be going through negative two, one line should be going through positive two. And I'm just getting that from the end part of these. Remember the end part or the part with no X, it's just a number. That's your y-intercept. That's where the lines are going to cross the y-axis, which is this up and down axis. So the only two possible graphs are A and C. And all you need to do is figure out which one is correct. And you do that from this beginning, num the number in front of the x, the slope, basically, the rate of change. I need to figure out, do these lines 
match up. So the line that goes through positive two, does it have a slope of one third? And then the line that goes through negative two, it should have a slope of negative one, basically, because there's a one in front of the X. And again, I'll be honest, you don't even have to do the math on it. We need a positive slope. Which, which way is positive, sloping up or down, if I'm looking at the line going from the left side to the right side of the graph? Going to the right goes positive, doesn't it? Well, if it's sloping up, like for example, you see this line right here, how it slopes up going from the left to the right. Yeah. That means it's a positive slope. This line slopes down from left to right, right? It's going down as I go to the right. That's a negative slope. I don't even have to count the numbers to tell you that that's the right answer. Because this is, this is negative. This slope right here has to be negative and it has to go through negative two. Well, it does. It's negative, it goes down, and it goes through negative two. This slope is positive, and it has to go through positive two. Well, yeah, it's positive. It goes up, and it goes through positive two. This slope right here goes through positive two, or this line, but it's a negative slope. It's going down. So I don't want a negative slope going through positive two, right? Because I'm looking at the equation right here. It's got to have a positive slope and go through positive two. Well, this one doesn't. It goes through positive two, but it's got a negative slope. So that, I don't even have to count squares. I can just tell by whether or not the, the slopes are positive or negative. An equation, I'm sorry, in a coordinate form like this. So this value is your, so the two value would be your X, the one value would be your Y. So whatever you think the answer is, what is the solution to the system of equations, which is basically means where do the two lines cross? You input the X value of that here and the Y value of that. And that is not the correct answer. I'll tell you right now what I just typed. That part I'm gonna make you figure out on your own. Um, here's the next question. This one's a little tricky. Um, The way you would do this would be through substitution. So you can watch that substitution video and you'll be able to figure it out. When I assigned this originally last week, I hadn't done the substitution video. So even though this assignment is about graphing, to answer this one, you can use substitution. Just because we didn't, like I said, you really wouldn't graph that at top equation because the Y is not by itself. I could move the 2x over to the right side by subtracting it, which would give me y equals negative 2x plus 2. Then I could graph it. Um, either way, if you don't get this one, if you're just not feeling it and you can't figure it out, I'm not going to count off much for getting this one wrong. You only have three options, though, so you got a decent chance of getting it right. The, this one's more important here. Again, Based on what I just told you in one of the videos, you need to be able to estimate what is this solution. Again, the solution when you look at a graph is where the two lines cross. So you just have to estimate, well, what is the approximate value of the X and the Y right there? That's all you have to do, piece of cake. So I pretty much gave you the answers to the two main problems, um, this graphing one and then number four. As for number one, I kind of gave you the answer to that when we talked about it at the beginning. You need to read that and see when is graphing. Um, when are graphing and substitution good to use when you're solving system of equations? What's the situation? Most people have been getting that right, actually, surprisingly. But um, So read through them, figure out those answers, and that's, that's all that's in that assignment. So that's one of the assignments. You have a second assignment. Are you guys still there, by the way? Yeah. All right. So you have a second assignment that is just like what I just did. So here we go. Um, so make up a... Oh, no, that's not it. So here we go, Pearson online graphing. So this Pearson assignment right here, 
is the same one that I was just showing you. And then it's the same one that I reassigned this week. So it's your second attempt at doing this assignment five. This assignment right here, assignment six, is pretty much the same exact thing. Is I think it even has one of the same exact questions. The multiple choice, the first multiple choice question, I think, is the same exact question. So if you get it right in assignment five, I'm pretty sure it's the same answer in assignment six. Um, and then you have three questions where you have to do the same thing I just showed you. There's four graphs, and you have to pick the correct graph. Then you have to pick the, the point that is the correct solution and, and type it in. Then you have to pick whether or not it's one solution, infinite solutions, or no solutions for a question. And then the last question, you have to estimate what the solution is just based on where the two lines cross. So assignment six is just like assignment five. And then assignment seven is substitution. So it's what you're going to want to watch this video for. Oh, wait, no, not that video. Um, the one that I did on substitution. This one right here. So you're going to want to watch this, this video to do that assignment seven. And it should, I mean, there's, I do plenty of examples. I think I do, I think I do four examples in this video right here. If for some reason you need other examples, I have old videos from last semester that we also did. Uh, Solving, yeah, here you go. Solving a system of equations with substitution, video three. Solving a system of equations with substitution, video two. Solving system of equations with substitution. So three old videos also, if you feel like you need even more help. But I think you'll be fine with just this one video right here. It goes over, it's pretty specific to the types of questions that are in that assignment seven in Pearson. Uh, anything else you guys can think of? So that's the assignments for this week. Just as far as grades go, like I said, the grades moving forward, especially probably the last four weeks of the class are going to be the most important grades. Maybe the last, maybe not the last four weeks, maybe week, maybe next week and then the three weeks after that probably because the last week I'm sure we're you know, not doing stuff that's super challenging. But um, so just move forward whatever you haven't done and haven't turned in don't worry about it for right now just keep up with what i'm giving you right now and we'll have days where maybe we'll do some kind of a makeup assignment to make up for that old stuff um so if you do talk to people you guys can let them know that that i said just work on what i'm assigning for that week uh, so get that done by friday what else grades Make sure you're reading through all the posts in Teams. Don't just go straight to the assignments page. Uh, posts are where I put really most of the information. Every once in a while, I'll put something. Focus, I also send focus messages out. So you should be getting it in several different locations. Um, I can't think of anything else unless you guys have questions. Anybody? All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. If I can figure out how to do that, you guys can go ahead and hang up. That's that's it. Bye, Mr. Gill. All right, I'll see you guys. Uh, hope everybody's staying safe. Hope your families are all good. All right, see you guys. Oh, okay.